boom boom. Thirty bucks. Twenty bucks. Still on the line for twenty bucks. They come playing. Your body's playing. I'll end up some nickels and some dime. Boom, ba dum, boom, boom, boom. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. They're begging me for twenty bucks. They can pay the rent. And only that we spent. You can pay me for twenty bucks. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jabor. It's Maggie, Mrs. Calabash Cooks. You saw me washing my hands. I'm going to have them in some sausage meat, so they need to be clean. We're on a time frame down to Christmas. So this is just an idea of something which would be quick and easy for Christmas rather than make sausage rolls. You can see I've got a list on the fridge of date and time that everything needs to be done by. Um, this is a recipe that I used to make a long time ago and I, I, I worked for the, I was a home economist when I, I, I got my qualifications from university at Sheffield with the gas board. There were six of us. And we used to make these all the time because when dignitaries came, uh, came to Sheffield, uh, it was rather, it was on the top of the list for that housing re redevelopment after the war, slum clearance and there were new apartment buildings being um, being made, uh, being built, and it, everybody came from all over the world. And of course, they used to come to the gas board, we got gas heating in, and as the home service advisors or home economists, it was our function to feed them and run the cocktail parties. So rather than make sausage rolls, we used to make these. It's sausage and onion pinwheel snack, and it makes your sausage meat go a lot further, one thing. It's cheaper to make, and they make nice nibbles. You don't get over full because a sausage roll, even a small one, is quite filling. And so we used to make these. And in those days, we had to make the puff pastry. Whereas now, thank goodness, we have frozen puff pastry. And this comes on a sheet like this. So you don't actually need a floured ball. Uh, a flower board or surface and I've just got some plain English bangers here which I've taken out of the castings so to take out the castings just run a pair of scissors up and and just pull the um, the skins off now this is dried onion soup powder which goes in there and you can add I've got parsley today Sometimes I put mixed herbs in. Uh, sometimes if I want to do a different spin on it, I'll put a little curry powder in instead of the um, instead of the onion soup mix. So you can, if you know who you're dealing with, if you know uh, the people that are coming to your party, you can mix and match. But why not just do um, why not just do a, a variety? So. I'm just mixing all this up together a lot. I want to make sure that the herbs and everything are well mingled. So that's why I had to wash my hands. You can wear a glove if you don't like the feel. I know some people don't like the feel of me on the hands. So I'm just going back over to the sink and I'm going to wash my hands again. As we used to say to the children, make sure your hands are clean in between. And we used to make, when I used to run the children's classes, we used to make them sing happy birthday. And by the time they got through happy birthday and washing the hands, we knew that they were clean. Because <laughs> it's amazing, you, you get children and they don't know how to wash their hands. We used to have some six years old and they had no idea how to wash their hands. And you'd get a little three year old that was up there and we used to say, 
you can wash your hands as many times as you like because we obviously had a hand washing sink and uh, some of them were up there every five minutes washing the hands every five seconds but that didn't matter the hands were nice and clean so we're going to put the sausage meat on here leave an edge now I'm only using half a sheet, half a packet of a pastry. Um, I wasn't quite sure how large the packet of puff pastry was because it's a different make to what I've used before. So it should, a pound of sausage meat should just about fill this, but you need to make sure that the edge is clear. And I've got a round-ended knife. You've seen me use these knives before. An old dining knife, look, the handle. Uh, these are what I had when I first left culinary school in 1962 and I had my own bed sitter. And at the time, Sheffield was, um, it was the main uh, steel city in England and it was the cutlery capital, cutlery capital of the world. These were made in Sheffield and as um, when I worked for the gas board and at college, if we wanted a cake tin, a special cake tin, we used to go down to one of the uh, steel mills that we knew and they would actually manufacture a cake tin for us. Can you imagine? Because uh, sometimes we wanted something which wasn't available on the open market. Uh, you've got to remember it was the 60s in England and things were just getting back after the war, really. So that's just like that. I've got a beaten egg in here with just a pinch of salt in there and the pinch of salt bring, just breaks down the membrane and we want to brush around the edges. I still like my old fashioned um, brush. It's seen a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of cooking but I find the bristle is easier to handle than the man-made. And let's put that over there. So we're going to roll this up now. So just start with the first one and we're going to roll it up like a Swiss roll. I'm going to push a little bit more meat towards the edge and I'll wash my hands again. I don't want it to have a big bank of pastry there without any meat. There we are. Let me just rinse my hands again. <laughs> and so we're going to roll this up like that. Pull your paper. If you've got a piece of paper underneath with your puff pastry. I'm going to just flatten it out a little bit like that. Now my baking sheet is already lined with parchment paper and I don't know if you can see it but I've tried to dampen the parchment paper. I'm going to just pour off the excess water. There's a reason for this. I'm use I've lined the sheet today. You needn't line it but make sure that the sheet, the baking sheet is damp. The steam gets underneath the puff pastry and makes it rise. So about an inch. And what we do is we tuck that end under like that and just flatten it out. Like that. So I'm going to put a little flour on my knife like so 
so we don't want that end coming adrift so just tuck him under if it's well sealed it shouldn't it it shouldn't um, escape but sometimes I think I've gone a bit far there on that one let's cut that into two it's up to you um, I mean if you if you know that you've got a lot of people coming and you've got a lot of snacks then make them a little bit thinner uh, people can then enjoy um, enjoy your sausage rolls your pinwheel snacks and not get over full and they can go around the table and enjoy all the nibbles I love nibbles I could eat nibbles rather than main course that's the problem just turn yeah just make sure that they're round because they do get a little bit squashed when um, just pull them into shape like that and this is a, isn't actually a baking sheet um, I've had these for years I've got about three of them um, in electric ovens they used to have removable tops for easy cleaning they would slide in and out and that's what they are I've had them for years but they're a little bit bigger than a, a normal baking sheet and when we moved here I couldn't find the wretched things uh, I went and bought some new baking sheets and they were in the <laughs> the trunk I was going to say the boot and nobody would uh, know what I was talking about the trunk of my car I'd put them in safely so that I wouldn't lose them in the move but one thing I have lost in the move and that's two years ago I've lost my piping nozzles and my piping nozzles and my cutters and I can't find my I know I've seen the piping nozzles since I've been here and I don't want to buy any more I've had them since I was training and they're special and I can't find the wretched things I'm probably going to have to buy another one or two but I must have had a dozen of different piping nozzles I used to I'm not very good at cake decorating it's not my forte but I I can do it and I used to actually make and decorate I used to run um, cater catering for weddings and I used to make the wedding cakes and decorate but that's the big fruit cakes the big three to four tier fruit cakes look I've got a little bit that's not worth saving so you see it doesn't make a mess with this look voila it's finished it's done with so now this is going into the oven um, around 375 380 if you know your oven uh, mine is a little bit slow so I've got it in at 380 and we're going to cook those until they're nicely risen and the sausage meat is cooked through so I'll go to put them in the oven now here we go there we are in the oven and I will see you back in about 10 minutes 15 minutes when they're all nicely cooked and we can have a coffee and a hot pinwheel snack so, mm. The smell in the kitchen is absolutely gorgeous. I would say the cooked, you can smell. Let's have a look. Yes, look at that. I've deliberately didn't put an egg wash on because I wanted the puff pastry to rise. You can just brush them with an egg, an, an egg wash, but the puff pastry won't rise if it's, if, it's, um, if it's sealed. Now, these are cooked. They're great. Um, I, you could cook them a little bit more, but I deliberately, when it's something like this, I deliberately undercook rather than overcook, so they're not too brown because um, coming up to Christmas I'm going to put these in the freezer and then I will defrost when I in the refrigerator when I, 
I want to use them and then I'm going to put them back in the oven again. So that's why I'm leaving just a little bit of leeway to put back into the oven to reheat. But you can see with my oven, these at the edge are a little bit, a little bit more brown. The oven isn't at exactly level. That's why we get that discrepancy. So let's take them back to the butcher block. Derek's wriggling the life out of me. Are they cooked? Are they cooked? Are they cooked? He wants one. So I'm going to just put this back. You will notice I don't, I've got oven gloves. I've got them hung up there, but I don't like oven gloves. I can't feel. So these are quite hot. So what we're going to do, just to show what they look like. Boom, boom, boom. I usually put a big heap on a plate and then let people help themselves. But that, let's put these over on here to cool. They are quite hot still. But you see, it's still a good mouthful. You know, you, it's a good nibble, but not quite as filling as sausage rolls. And the children love these. Look, that's the one that was a little bit misshapen. The ones that are misshapen, yeah, the kids used to be waiting around uh, the kitchen table, waiting for them because they knew that they, they were going to get those to eat and lick the bowl when I was baking. So I'm just going to get rid of this piece of paper like that and you can see this is my very unglamorous baking sheet so I'll just get rid of that put it over there and that is all there is to making pinwheel snacks pinwheel sausage snacks sausage pinwheel snacks whichever way around uh, for for this I've put uh, I've put uh, Christmas colors so it looks nice so please remember to go to mrscalabashcooks.com uh, you will see all the recipes on there I go to mrs Calabash we on a Tuesday 7:30 we have a coffee a chat and a guess and this week I've got Dale coming in with sunflower uh, cold sunflower pressed um, oil he grows the sunflowers and he makes the oil and don't forget Friday 2 30 we've got two o'clock sorry two o'clock Friday we've got our cooking class <laughs> our cooking club so please join us all donations gratefully received love you all have a great Christmas bye Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks.